All right, in this video, we're in section 2.1, uh, and we're really only focusing on direct proofs, uh, although the title includes some more information. And so I'm going to do an example of a direct proof, and I'm going to work the problem from your book. Here is number eight on page 75, which I have already written down. So we're supposed to prove that for all integers m and n, if m and n are both odd, then when we add m and n, that is even. So what I'm going to do first is just kind of some scratch work. And so this wouldn't be anything that when you write this up for credit you would have to show, but I think it helps uh, to get us started on actually writing the proof. And so first I'm going to look at um, what the hypothesis of the statement says. Now remember the hypothesis is the, the if part. So after if it says m and n are both odd. So what can we get from that? So from our hypothesis, we know that m and n are both odd, and we have a way to specify that an integer is odd. Um, an integer is odd, so we can say m is odd if there exists. an integer, call it k1, so that m is equal to 2k1 plus 1. And since n is odd, we can say the exact same thing only difference being that we shouldn't use uh, k1 because in general uh, this has to be equal to 2 times some other integer plus 1. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and write that out. We can say n your call cannot be completed. n is odd if exists an integer k2 so that n equals 2k2 plus 1. m and n are both different integers, so k1 and k2 have to be different in general. Okay, so that's what we know from the hypothesis. So what we want to do is take this information that we're given and reach the conclusion. And the conclusion in the statement is that m plus n is even. So what I might do before I actually write this out is just what am I looking to conclude? I want to conclude that m plus n is even, which would mean that m plus n must equal 2 times some other integer k3. And I might say this a little better by saying m plus n is even if there exists. K3 so that this is true. Okay, so if I take this expression and add it to this expression, I should get some expression in the form 
2 times an integer. So let me just do that real quick and see what we get. So again, just kind of scratch work. What happens if I take m plus n? Well, m is 2k1 plus 1. So this is m. Add that to n, which is 2k2 plus 1. If I add, uh, I'll have 2k1 plus 2k2 and 1 plus 1 is also 2. Each of those terms has a 2 so I can factor out the 2. And there I have the form that I wanted. This 2k3 is the form that I wanted, and this fits that form. It's 2 times some integer, and so if you want, you could call this k3. Okay, so that was a little bit messy. Let's, let's now actually write the proof based on what we just kind of scratched out. So we, in a direct proof, we start by assuming that the hypothesis is true. So we're going to say we assume that m and n are both odd integers. So assume that m and n odd integers. From that I can go back and write down what I scratched from my hypothesis which is that there exists k1 so that m equals 2k1 plus 1 and also there exists k2 I have it right here uh, so that n equals 2k2 plus 1. So we can say that in one line maybe. There exists integers k1 and k2 so that m equals 2 k1 plus 1 and n equals 2k2 plus 1. And then from there we just need to reach the conclusion which above in my scratch work I did the work that I need right here and so then I jump into adding m and n and so I can say so m plus n 2k1 plus 1 plus 2k2 plus 1 and we saw that that equaled 2k1 plus 2k2 plus 2 factor out the 2 And from here it should be obvious that we have the form 2 times an integer, which is the form of an even integer, so we can just conclude that m plus n is an even integer. And that finishes the proof, but just a final comment about what you would want to show. 
this page right here is actually what you should write up to get full credit when you do a proof like this. So if it doesn't matter to me if when you work you actually show the scratch work. This is just kind of my strategy for writing out the information that I'm given and also kind of having a road map for where I want to finish. But when it's all said and done, what I care about seeing is the actual written proof, both on your homework and um, on the exam. And so that finishes uh, the example from section 2.1.